I'd like to summarize our 30-year investigation into the economic burden of depression. Our first analysis in this context was published in 1993. A key finding then was that more than half the economic burden of illness was born in the workplace due to reduced employee productivity. That's a finding that we have replicated over and over again every time we go back and, and study this issue. Fast forward 10 years to 2003 with our first update to the original study. By then, many more people with depression were reached by the healthcare sector, but the quality of treatment was generally not all that good. In our next update in 2015, we documented a rising societal burden of illness. We noted that during robust economic times, depressed people are highly employable, but when a cyclical downturn occurs, as was the case during the Great Recession, employees with depression tend to be disproportionately adversely affected. All three of these articles appeared in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, a peer-reviewed medical journal. In 2021, we published our third update to the original research from 30 years ago, these findings were part of a special issue of pharmacoeconomics that I co-edited that focused on the economics of depression and its treatment. One key takeaway from this latest set of research is that depression is trending younger with half of all sufferers now aged 18 to 34. This is in contrast to most major physical disorders such as arthritis, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, which tend to become more prevalent with age. A second key takeaway is that depression imposes substantial costs on society as a whole. We estimate that the incremental economic burden of illness was $326 billion in 2018, but only 11% was attributable to the cost of treating depression itself. The remainder was for, was for comorbid medical conditions, workplace costs, and costs of suicide. So what we can readily see and easily attribute to the medical costs of the depression is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the overall economic burden of illness. A third key takeaway is that depression treatment is still not as widely accessed as it should be. The treatment rate has doubled over the past 30 years, but it's remained stuck at around 56% for more than a decade. A meaningful improvement in the economic landscape will only be possible with more widely accessed and effective depression treatment options. Our latest update predated COVID-19, but there are already early hints of the adverse consequences of the pandemic. Since 2019, the prevalence rate of depression has risen from 7% to 27% overall, and from 11% to 39% for those in their late teens and 20s. This is staggering. So now we're in completely uncharted territory in terms of the ongoing burden of illness. In the coming years, we look forward to continuing to report the economic effects of this widespread and very burdensome mental illness.